Creative Babble. Hey, is this Sean? It is. I just got your email, so I figured instead of replying, I was like, let me just give him a call and see if now's a good time. Well, it's not because I've got a bunch of stuff I got to do today. Obviously, I just got out of... uh... just was released Friday. Sean David Morton was just released from federal prison last week. And it looks like I caught him at a bad time. So I guess this interview is a bust. And I've got a bunch of errands I have to do and things I have to check into and all that stuff. But how are you, sir? Everything all right? Oh, wait, wait, wait. It looks like the interview is back on. We could always reschedule, but I'm doing well, man. And I'm glad to hear that you're in remission. Sean says he's been battling cancer for the last several years while in prison. On his Twitter feed, his wife posted a picture of a tumor growing on the side of his neck that is the size of a gumball. In the tweet, she was pleading for help from the real Donald Trump, Kim Kardashian, Tucker Carlson, and the late Rush Limbaugh. You see, Sean David Morton was arrested in 2016 after being charged with more than 50 counts related to filing phony tax documents and bogus government bonds. He was also charged with conspiracy to defraud the IRS. These are similar tactics used by sovereign citizens. It took the jury just two hours to return with a verdict. He was found guilty on all charges. I thought the previous episode was going to be the last in my series on sovereign citizens, but I was wrong. This interview with Sean David Morton was completely unplanned. And it's a good thing too, because the episode I was going to play for you today fell through. I was kind of freaking out. But then the podcast gods looked down upon me and answered my prayers. I'm Javier Leva, and this is Pretend. Stories about real people pretending to be someone else. Sean served his time, but hated every moment of it. The place I got sent was where Bernie Madoff died. Yeah. And where they've had more COVID deaths in that hospital and put me on a plane and took me to Butner, North Carolina and all the all the glamour that that implies. They put a port in my chest, which they put in upside down, which then got infected. And then they gave me a staff and MRSA, which is deadly. It was a nightmare. And I'm glad you contacted me. So I've got your number. I got a ton of errands I have to do today. And my wife yeah. is sitting there with her stay weird t-shirt on, you know, cause I, I got, I, I have no clothes. I have to go buy clothes. It's a long story. So, uh, dang it. It looks like the interview is off again. No, no, that's, that's fine. So what do you, I mean, so what do you, so what do you, so what do you want to do? How do you want to set this up Javier? I, I can, uh, well, whenever you have time, let's just chat like this on the phone or we could do a zoom call so we could see. I thought we were done, but. Sean kept telling me about his horrible legal experience and his release from prison. So you're trying to tell me as a federal judge has no jurisdiction over 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 the prison that's keeping him. Is that what you're trying to say? Woman, you know, how dare you? He went on and on and he issued the order for compassionate release. So I don't have I don't have an ankle bracelet. I don't have to call him five times a day. So on it goes. So there you are. Okay, so look, uh, I can get back to you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I got to buy clothes today. I got doctor's appointments. But it looks like the interview is off again. I'm on supervised release. But he keeps going. Right now, which is basically you send him an email once a month. Well, yeah, man. I mean, just let me know. You, you think tomorrow's a better day or? 
just say, wait, in, in brief, in brief, tell me about you, tell me about you and about your podcast and about oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, in 60 seconds, go. Yeah, yeah, I got 60 seconds. All right, so uh, I started my career in journalism. We've been on the phone for more than 10 minutes now, and he doesn't even know why I'm calling him. Hopefully, I could keep him on the phone long enough to tell him. I'm also okay. doing a, a piece on the sovereign citizen movement. And I know that's not what they call themselves, and there's d- tons of different no, flavors. It, it is. It, it is. They're, they're idiots because if you're, you're either a citizen or you're sovereign, and I can tell you everything about that. You see, the only reason I called Sean David Morton is because his name is synonymous with the sovereign citizen movement. The New York Times wrote a whole piece about him with the title, quote, How Sovereign Citizens Help Swindle $1 Billion from the Government They Disavow. When it comes to sovereign citizens, I really thought Sean was the guy. But now he's telling me that sovereign citizens are idiots. Hmm. Interesting. Because look, dude, I tried all of that shit. I mean, I'm smarter than the average bear. And, uh, you know, I'm the best of the best of these guys. Sean Morton told me that he got burned by the sovereign citizen community. He says he followed their anti-government playbook and got burned every move he made. If you're confused, you should check out my episode on sovereign citizens. But just as a reminder, sovereign citizens in America are people just like you and me. Except they don't pay their share of taxes. You see, they don't recognize the United States of America as a legitimate government. They also don't abide by federal laws. And they just bulldozed me. I mean, they just basically, the judge ignored everything that I said. When I asked him, this is in court, I said, what is your jurisdiction over me as a living, breathing human being? That's not me in those documents, that all capital name thing that you've actually got in the documents. This became a problem for Sean Morton every time he went to court. You see, most government documents have your name spelled in all caps. Sovereign citizens believe that this is not a coincidence. The reason your name is spelled in all caps is because the government is holding each and every one of us as collateral. That person named on your social security card is not really you. It's your straw man. Every day I said, I want Mr. and Mrs. United States or Mr. and Mrs. IRS, I want them here by end of business today because I need them on the stand so I can face my accuser. Because I'm being accused by Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny and Donald Duck. It's a bunch of shit that doesn't exist. And I'm a real living person. Still confused? Don't worry. So was the judge. This all capital names thing. You know what he said? He said, you're going to shut up and you're going to sit down or I'm going to make prison look like a birthday party to you. I've got, you know, I've got ways to make you suffer that you can't imagine. And I started packing up my stuff. And he says, where are you going? I said, you're not going to give me a ruling on jurisdiction. So you have no jurisdiction over me. So I'm leaving. And by the time I hit the door, he had a button and two, you know, U.S. Marshals came running out of a side door who grabbed me. And then and, and, and as I was being dragged back, I said, oh, you're kidnapping me now and put me back on my chair. Sean Morton learned the hard way that being a sovereign citizen isn't what it's made out to be. The gamut of, quote, sovereign citizen people or sovereign people who I found out were flakes, frauds. Uh, criminals, and by the time you did all their paperwork and everything else and it didn't work, it was always your fault. It was always you did something wrong. You were, yeah, and then they would disappear. He says sovereign citizens are just a bunch of con artists. The biggest scum of all was this guy named Carl Lentz, you know, who ripped me off for a bunch of money, who said he was going to appear, who then kept the money and laughed in my face and said, well, you'll, you'll probably need this money for when you go to prison. I mean, it's a it's a it's it's a labyrinth maze of of fruits, frauds, and just complete idiots. You know, when they're when you're when their shit doesn't work. So, you, so you're I'm saying, I guess, what you're saying is that you tried it and then and but now you you don't subscribe to that belief anymore, right? Well, dude, I'm still looking for something that works. I mean, yeah, I I did I did all of it. I had all my paperwork done, and you know what the federal courts did with it? Wiped their ass with all of it. They said, "What the fuck's this?" And said, well, you're going to prison anyway. And, you know, to Sean, being a sovereign citizen is futile. You know, and again, I remind people, I said, they have all the sticks, they have all the guns, and they have all the cages. And one way or another, you can file paperwork after paperwork after paperwork. And that's why people are sitting in jail. But here's the confusing part about this whole thing. Sean Morton is painting himself as a victim. 
But he's also the one who has led several sovereign citizen workshops and spewed sovereign citizen ideology on his conspiracy radio talk show. And at one point, that show was so popular that it was the nation's number three radio program. I mean, and, and here's the other thing. When Lois Lerner testified in front of Congress, her exact quote was, well, we're going after, we're going after right-wing radio crazies, her exact words to Congress. Isn't that you? Dude, I check all those boxes, yeah. And so I was the guy. But anyway, when Lois Lerner said that, they arrested me or they indicted me. It's interesting because I was not expecting for you to say what you've told me so far. But didn't you lead a workshop at some point called The Sovereign Factor, The Revolution Starts With You? And look, that's why that's why they went after me. But what I was showing people was just, you know, the only thing I was showing them was the difference between living men and dead men and, and how they get you with the birth certificate. You see... To you and me, the birth of a child is a miracle. And when that child is born, he or she becomes a citizen in whatever country they happen to be born in. Well, you and I don't give much thought to what happens next. But for people like Sean Morton, childbirth is just a transaction. Because you're, you're, you have a certificate of a registration of live birth. And then 30 days later, they create the birth certificate. And that certificate is then used to create you as a taxpayer to create you as a as a voter, a voter, a taxpayer, a juror, and then that certificate is then sold to the federal government. Which brings us back to Sean Morden standing before a judge. And look, I was on the stand for 45 minutes where this, this bitch Valerie Makowitz, you know, was saying you're a sovereign citizen. I said, no, I'm not. I said, I've never used, I, I've, I've never said that. I'm a, I'm a citizen of the state of California and I'm not a federal citizen under the 14th Amendment. And I tried to explain, and she says, well, you got a U.S. passport. And I said, that's a, uh, that's a forced benefit. I can't move in and out of the country with, without that. Oh, you use the roads. I say, I pay gas taxes. He says, you know, do you vote? I said, no, I've, res- I've rescinded my voter card. I said, I know what you're trying to do. Make, make me look like I'm insane to these people. And insane to these people, he looked. I'll read to you the 14th Amendment just to refresh your memory. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the states where they reside. Again, the citizens of the United States and the state where they reside. Remember that last part. Now, I know from my middle school civics class that the 14th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution was enacted during the Reconstruction Era to abolish slavery and restore legal rights for black Americans. So I'm confused how this has anything to do with this white guy who's in trouble with the IRS. Explain to me the 14th Amendment thing, because I I hadn't heard that one before. 14th Amendment created two classes of citizens, federal citizen and a U.S. citizen. And they did that specifically because the, the, the blacks weren't getting any rights. The language, if you, if you tear apart the 14th Amendment, it says they create a second class of citizen. I can explain it to you very simply. Are you a resident of the United States or a citizen of the United States? I trying, am a citizen of the United States because I was born in the United States. Okay, but if you're living in North Carolina, are you a citizen of North Carolina? Yes. No, nope, 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 nope. You're a resident of North Carolina, aren't you? Now, remember, there's no such thing as the United States. There's no such thing as a country. We're, we're 50 sovereign states that form a union. You see, the president gets up and says the state of the union is strong. And, and I'm trying to get you to, because people are brainwashed into thinking there's a place called America and that we're Americans. And they're idiots because they don't understand that they create the United States of America we're not even a country. The country and the nation that everybody gets all puffy about is only 10 square miles of Washington, D.C. And even that's a corporation. And that corporation is run by the Vatican. And I can prove it. And I can show you all the stuff. It's Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, Samoa, post offices and military bases. All right. That's the United States. When I go to the post office or I'm in prison, federal prison, I'm in the United States. When I cross the street, I'm now in the sovereign state of of California. So I was just trying to show people that there's a difference between being a resident of a sovereign state and then renouncing your, quote, federal citizenship because you become, and that's what the 14th Amendment created. It created a second class of citizenship. So 
so that the blacks could have rights that then and then they get they gave them federal rights so it created a second class of federal citizen over the citizens of the states you with me not really All I hear is that these guys are trying to exploit and warp a constitutional amendment designed to make African-American citizens for their own financial gain. But maybe I'm missing something here. So you're saying, just so I can drive this home, is that because of the 14th Amendment, now it is defined that you are a citizen of that state. No, no. You're a resident of the state, but you're a citizen of the United States. And I was trying to tell people there's a difference you can renounce your, quote, federal citizenship and become a, a, a citizen, not a sovereign citizen. There's no such thing. It's an oxymoron. So just for clarity, so in your case, yeah, you were trying yeah. to renounce your citizenship for the United States, but keep your residency Correct. for the state. Wait, 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 not residency, my citizenship of the state. So again, there's no such thing as a sovereign citizen. So I'm just, I'm just trying to get people out of their out of their heads and put them into the semantics that there's no such thing as an American. There's 50 sovereign states that are all part of a union. That's what I was trying to teach people. I was, I was trying to say, you know, you can get out of that matrix. Another thing he was trying to teach these people was not only how to get out of the matrix, but how to cash in on it as well. In these workshops, Sean David Morton taught attendees how to eliminate tax debt, student loans, and even their mortgage. Zap. Just like that. He calls it a bond process. And so um, how does that get rid of, I guess I don't understand how that gets rid of your mortgage and your debt. You write them a bond for the mortgage or the debt. See, that's what they threw me in prison for. Again, I didn't do any of this for myself. I did, I did a dozen bonds for friends of mine. And they're trying to say that that's fraud. And I said, okay, produce the bonds. If I'm fraudulent, I'm submitting fraudulent documents produce originals of the fraudulent documents. And they couldn't do it. The DOJ, with all their might and all their power, infinite subpoena power, infinite money, infinite lawyers could not produce a single original piece of evidence against me. So what did they get me for? Conspiracy. So how does that process work, though? So you are you fill out some sort of paper, you create a bond, and then you say... Yeah, you, that- you, 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 create, a, you, you create a bond against your social security card, because that's an account with the, with the Commerce Department. On the back of your social security card, there's another number in red. And that number starts, I mean, get out your social security card, take a look at the second number on the back. And you'll notice that there's a number that will always start with a letter. And that letter will be A through L, because those are the first 12 letters of the alphabet. And A through N, A through L relates to a Federal Reserve Bank that holds your bonds. He's right. There is a sequence of numbers on the back of your social security card that start with a letter. But these numbers are not linked to a secret private bank account with the Federal Reserve. In fact, the Federal Reserve site states, and I quote, A recent hoax circulating on the internet asserts that the Federal Reserve maintains accounts and that the individual can access these accounts to pay bills and obtain money. These claims are false. (laughs) So there you go. I still don't understand. So you write a bond and... Yeah, okay, look, my, look, look, look my wife is... Oh, okay, okay. she's, I, giving, you, she's giving you the sign. We can, we can talk, we can talk about this stuff. We were just getting to the good part. I have so many things I wanted to talk about. I knew he had to run, but I couldn't help but asking one more question. Hey, I got a question for you, though. Yes, sir. I've been I asked him about Barbara Lavender. Barbara Lavender is the wife of a man who stumbled into Sean Morton's Sovereign Citizen Workshop while attending a UFO conference. You can't make this stuff up. Barbara Lavender's husband, Jeff, came home all excited because he learned from Sean Morton how to instantly eliminate their debt. All of it. Now keep in mind, all this was happening after the Great Recession of 2008. People's houses were foreclosing because they couldn't pay their mortgage. It was a painful time in history. And the Lavenders were excited because they racked up $48,000 in student loan debt. And they couldn't keep up with the loan. And before they knew it, they were $70,000 in the hole. It sounded kind of fishy, but this Sean Morton guy, he sounds like he knows what he's talking about. So they went with his advice. I did a bond for her and her husband for free. And I said, look, was I going to get a free house? He says he did it for free, but it's reported that they paid $2,500 for his services. So, Sean Morton created this so-called bond out of certificate paper, you know, the kind that you buy at Office Depot. And he mailed it in. 
Mrs. Lavender waited and waited, but her student debts never went away. Months later, she got a knock on the door. It was the IRS. Sean Morton's time was running out. By now, he's under the IRS's radar, and the evidence of fraud was mounting against him. While Sean Morton and his wife were on board a cruise ship traveling down the coast of Mexico, the feds were getting ready to make an arrest. By the way, interesting side note, the cruise ship was called the Conspiracy. S-E-A spells C, Conspiracy, you get it? Anyway, when the ship docked, Sean Morton and his wife were arrested. Did they what make the arrest on the boat? On the boat itself? Yeah. Yes. Wow. And in front of everybody? Yeah, on a cruise ship registered to a foreign country, which technically made it foreign territory. Sean Morton says that he did nothing wrong. He was just trying to help people like the Lavenders. Look, what, was I going to get a free house? Was I going to get paid? Was I going to get part of your house? Were you going to let me live at your home? No. Then why aren't you being indicted? I did this for you, for your benefit, not for mine. Hmm. And this was their this was their star witness against me. This woman named Barbara Lavender. Listen, I know That's I know you got to go, man. Goes. I know you got to go, but All I'd right. love to spend another half hour hour with you talking because I got so many questions for you. Well, I'm the best guy to be able to defend it because I'm not a big fan, obviously, of all this stuff. We're going to take a quick break, and hopefully Sean David Morton can stay on the call just a little bit longer so he could tell me about his supernatural abilities. Oh yeah, we're going there. But, you know, the sovereign citizen guys, again, they're, they're, they're hillbillies living outside everything. And there's ways around it. I mean, you know... So let me get this straight. Sovereign citizens are crazy hillbillies, but call them what you want. Isn't Sean Morton spouting the same kind of crazy ideas? People say, what do you mean I own my house? Really? Okay, and if you don't pay your taxes on your house, what do they do? Well, they take it away. Really? So it's your house? Why don't you tell me how, how much your house it is? Sean Morton says he's not trying to defraud the government. He's done everything right, like the time he filed the 1099 OID to claim a tax refund. By the way, not to get into too many details, a 1099 OID is a special tax form that stands for Original Issue Discount. Anyways, that doesn't matter. The point is that it got him into some trouble. Look, I never did the 1099 OID. I, I paid these guys to do it. And we have them on tape saying they did not charge the people who committed the actual crime because they were going after their clients. And we you got paid, them on tape. You paid that. who to do it? Brandon Adams and his father, Alexander Adams, who was a CPA, and we paid them to do the 1099 OID process because we had lost money. You know, we'd lost a bunch of money uh, trading the foreign exchange markets. And so, okay, if you lose money in a business, you can get, you know, tax deductions and whatever else. So, and I got letters from the IRS that said they owed me another $4.2 million dollars. And, you know, we'll pay you and write you a check in two weeks. And so I got a refund check from the IRS, which was going to go back to investors and whatever else. And a bunch of it did. And, uh, and that's what they got me on. They were trying to claim that I had somehow fraudulently put in a 1099 OID. And I, I, I did everything right. Sean Morton says that he has proof that he didn't commit fraud, but they refused to look at all the evidence in court. And so this is why they went after me. And you said the IRS originally, the IRS originally alerted you about this money, about the $4 million? Yeah. Yeah, I got a letter that says we owe you another $4.2 million. Then one day after filing the 1099 OID form, Sean Morton receives a deposit for almost half a million dollars from the IRS. ka -ching. But by the time the IRS realized that they made a mistake and went back to retrieve their money, the money was gone. And so what they're saying that it was an error, but you're saying that they really did owe you that money? Yeah, they did. Of course they did. They said that they said it themselves. And instead of paying me the money, they decided to throw me in jail. Sean Morton and his wife were scheduled for sentencing on June of 2016. But guess what? They never showed up. And that's how he became a fugitive. I know we're running short on time. I, w I had a question about why you didn't show up to sentencing. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I did skip it because I, I went into the court that morning at 10 o'clock. So it's not I did show up. I did show up. I showed up. I served them with paperwork that I had a motion before the Supreme Court that was to delay sentencing. 
That easy. They don't tell you that part, do they? No, no, I didn't hear that part. Unfortunately, that's what then led to my demise with myself and my wife both getting uh, jumped at the same time, which is what then led to the people selling all of our cats and selling all of our stuff and breaking into my bank accounts and, you know, whatever else. I know, I know. He tried to end this conversation several times already, but I still have some more questions. Sean Morton was involved in another scheme that had nothing to do with his sovereign beliefs. This time, Sean was using his unique abilities to help others. Yeah, currency. Well, I was, we were doing currency trading. Yeah. Which is not regulated by the SEC, by the way, but the SEC decided to bring a civil lawsuit against me anyway. That's right. Currency trading. The purchasing and selling of currencies in the foreign exchange marketplace, with the hopes of making profits, of course. The foreign exchange, by the way, is the largest financial market in the world. Every single day, tons of money is exchanged from one currency to the other. The value of these currencies are constantly changing. And investors can profit if they make the right kind of bets. For example, let's say an investor like Sean thinks that the value of the US dollar is going to grow faster than the euro. Well, Sean can buy the dollar versus euro pair and make money. And if he's wrong and the price goes down, he loses money. Makes sense? But how can one know exactly how the foreign exchange market is going to go? Well, there's no real surefire way to tell. Unless, I mean, this is kind of crazy, but what if you had the ability to predict the future? Or sense with your mind secret exchanges that are happening from a distance? It's what psychics call remote viewing. And guess who has this special power? So the concept was that you could, using remote viewing, you could, uh, I guess, predict the currency rate, right? Yeah. Look, dude, I I turned $525,000 into six and a half million bucks using remote viewing techniques. $300,000 of my own money, $225,000 of a group of people. His plan was to turn half a million dollars into six and a half million dollars. How? With his mind. And surprisingly, some people went along with it. The Securities and Exchange Commission says that after listening to Sean's radio show, one man invested $217,000, an elderly woman invested $20,000, and another guy invested his entire life savings. And I had a trader that decided he was going to go rogue and go off the reservation and do the exact opposite of what I told him to do because he said, what you were telling me to do was insane and it would have been financially irresponsible for me to do what you told me to do. Hmm. I remember the day I'm calling him going, man, we should be worth like a billion dollars now, right? Uh, no, uh, I lost all the money. And so then would you invest people's money? We had like five or six different companies and people put money into the companies and then I, we would put it into the foreign exchange market. According to the complaint, unbeknownst to the investors, instead of investing all the funds into the foreign currency trading firms... Sean Morton diverted some of the funds, almost half a million dollars, to his own shell companies. There was one guy that lost money. And by the way, everybody was in the whole thing. I said, look, if you made your money back, here, take your money. You know, you take the money that you won from the casino and put it in your pocket. And we only had trouble from two people, two people that came in at the very end where they didn't get their money back. Some old lady that lost like $20,000 and then tried to blackmail me into giving her all her money back. And another guy that lost like 60 grand, this gay fella, and he had a gay boyfriend who worked at the SEC. Was he the one from Washington State? Yes. Oh, okay, because I got something here that says he invested $217,000. No, that's complete bullshit. How do you feel that history will remember you? Don't know, don't know, don't care, because all, all revolutionaries, you know, it depends on which side writes the history. I've tried to warn people, you know, I've again, when you're, when you're standing on the rooftops with your hair on fire trying to warn people and you still get ignored, I predict things over and over and over again and it doesn't seem like anybody listens, so it's just one of those things. Sean Morton has lived a great life. Sure, it's been bumpy lately with the whole cancer and prison thing, But all in all, he's had a successful talk show, he's an author, he's been on countless UFO documentaries, and he's even earned a PhD in therapeutic psychology from the International College of Spiritual and Psychic Sciences. And it only cost him 40 Canadian dollars per credit. 
He's also traveled to India where it's reported that he met the Dalai Lama. He says that he was taught the secret of astral times by the Nepalese monks. This is also where he developed his psychic remote viewing abilities. Remember, I'm the dude that put Area 51 on the front page of all the newspapers. I'm the guy that found the hilltop that looked down on the base uh, and filmed it for the first time. I mean, you know, I'm the guy that started Sci-Fi Channel. These days, Sean is just getting by. He says that the corporation we all believe to be the United States of America has taken everything from him. For stealing my car, for, for looting my bank accounts, for looting my businesses. Uh, for taking everything that I, you know, spent my entire... So I have nothing now. I'm leaving, I literally have to... I don't have clothes. I don't have underpants and shoes. Yeah, and I have... That's why I was begging people. I was on the radio, you know, and the only reason I'm alive now is a woman heard me on the radio and said, I've got a... I have a studio apartment you could stay in for a little while. I had other people loan me money so I get my books back in print. I could have talked all day with Sean Morton, but this time, he really had to go. I got to I got to go. My wife right, man. my wife's chewing my head off. Thank you. Thanks for your time. All right, man. I'll talk to Appreciate you Appreciate it. Bye. Thanks, buddy. Bye. Next time on Pretend. Have you ever heard about ransomware attacks? It's when a hacker hacks into a company's system and locks them out. And if the company doesn't pay, well, their data goes away. But actually, does it go away? And I found out that when a company does not pay a ransomware attack, the hackers just dump the data in the dark web. Well, I've been poking around the dark web and I have found people's social security numbers, driver's license, credit reports, everything an identity thief needs to steal your identity. It's really shocking. Also, I spoke to a man whose job is to negotiate with these hackers. That's next time on Pretend. So how did you guys like the interview with Sean Morton? I was just as surprised as you that, that that interview lasted as long as it did. But Sean Morton still had a lot to say, so we set up a time to talk. And I'll have that interview on my Patreon channel. Completely free, by the way. You don't have to sign up for Patreon. We just didn't have time to put that interview in this episode. But if you want to listen to it, it's free. Go to pretendradio.org slash donate. You don't need to donate, but you can if you want to. That would be really, really nice. <laughs> And listen to Sean Morton's interview. We talk about UFOs. We talk about his psychic powers. All the things that we didn't get to in this episode. So go ahead and check it out. That's all I got for this week. If you guys like what I'm doing, let me know on Twitter. Let me know on Facebook. Leave a review. I have no idea if you like what I'm doing or if you don't like what I'm doing. And if you like what I'm doing, you should tell a friend about it. Seriously, the best thing you could do to help out the show is just to spread the word. Anyways, take care, guys. I hope everyone's safe. We'll talk soon. Creative Babble.